94, the podcast with Dan Gardell and Greg Evans. Hello and welcome back to 1874, the podcast. I'm your host, Dan Bardell, joined by The Athletic's Greg Evans to talk about all things Aston Villa as we normally do. Of course, we're mainly going to cover Aston Villa 3, Brentford 3. Not my favourite Saturday of the season at Villa Park, but we'll come on to that. This show is, of course, sponsored by NordVPN. If you want to go to 1874.io slash NordVPN, you'll get a huge discount off your plan and you'll also get four months for free. And the good news is it's completely risk-free because Nord offer a 30-day money back guarantee Greg it's been a while international break you of course on golfing breaks as well but now you are back in the UK I saw you were back in the UK but to be honest thought you were still in Thailand because I saw that you were still playing golf albeit at the Belfry <laughs> yeah still trying to uh, play as much as I can although I haven't actually got out and played you know actually played out on the course because it's just so wet it's rained every right. single day that I've uh, that I've been home and I've been told that the all the time that I was away it rained as well so yeah um Nice to be back because it's good to... No, it's not. You absolutely it's good. Like, it's, you're no, it is good. You there, there, are certain things, there are certain things that, is, you know, you miss, you miss a bit of normality, don't you, when you're, a, when you're away for so long. And um, it, it is nice to be back. But, uh, but yeah, I do miss, I do miss the weather. <laughs> so media trend, off the record answer that I was given when we came on compared to the on the record No, no, because, like, you know, I was, I, was, I was missing various things. Yeah, it's, it's hard when you're away for so long. Yeah. Um, in some in some areas, yeah. Are you back back at work now? Back working again? Um, I am working, but not officially. No, because you get uh, six months off through paternity leave. Um, through the athletic. you must have you've so, had your six months there. You must have had your no six months no. It started no. in started in January. Um, so oh, I officially okay. returned back to work in July. But I think I always said to myself I'd, I'd have sort of half of the half of the six months off off, and then the the second sort of. The, the, the final three months I'd sl- slowly start getting back into work I think you it's hard isn't it you don't want to switch off too much you know with Liverpool the team that I cover now mainly um you know still challenging for for three for three titles um you know you want to uh you want to stay in touch with it so yeah I'm back back at work but not officially writing yet you still got your eye in very much so with, with Aston Villa and 3-3 three, three at the weekend against Brentford, probably not a score that many people would have predicted. Certainly not a score people would have predicted in the 46th, 47th minute. But I'm still not sure really how I feel about it or, or what I think. Obviously, we're recording this on a on a Monday morning now. Still not sure where I, I lie with it because obviously, you know, you should never be in the position of being 2-0 up and then in the space of 10 minutes being 3-2 <laughs> down. That just shouldn't happen. I'd level that Brentford probably haven't scored three goals in a game. All season, Villa haven't really capitulated like that other than the Manchester United game that I, that I remember. And then there was a brief capitulation against Luton as well, but they went on and, uh, and won that game. But certainly not at Villa Park. We haven't seen anything like that for, for a long, long time. I'm pleased they got back, got back to 3-3, good resilience. In years gone by, that, that simply doesn't happen with, with, with Villa teams. But I'm still just a bit baffled by that by that 10 minutes and, and what I saw, Greg. Yeah, I mean... Uh... I, I am a little bit as well, but I also do think there, there have been some signs creeping in, in in more in recent months, really. And I think that's a lot down to the the injuries that that Villa have you know been been dealt with. And I think that was a game that Villa really missed Kamara. You know, you can look at the defensive issues or the defensive mistakes, and yeah, there were plenty of them. But I think if you have really solid cover in front, which Kamara usually gives Villa. Um, it makes it a lot easier for the defenders. And I think what you're also seeing is, you know, Konza, yes, he can play at right back and has played there a fair few times this season, but we know that he's much more comfortable at centre back. And just those slight nuances in the in the changes uh, in the changing of his positions, you know, it might just make things a little bit harder for him. And, you know, three of the goals came from from that area, didn't they? Yeah. Um and you know, I'm not solely blaming Konza because you you know you need to look at the whole defensive unit really because there was um, you know so many errors there, and it was just I mean you got to give Brentford a little bit of credit they they really struggled in the first half they changed their approach they went more you know proactive and um, and really gave it a good go in the second half and, and got their rewards for it but. Yeah, I mean, there are a couple of games that Villa have started to look like they're going to throw things away when, you know, when they're two goals up. It's almost a bit of a, a worrying position to be in, which it should never be, should it, at a team who are no, you know, fourth or fifth. That wasn't what they were doing. If, you know, Villa Park, the back end of last season and the start of this season, they went 1-0, 2-0 up and you yeah. thought, 
game over. Game's won here, clean shirt. Yeah, and I mean, look, you know, they, uh, this was the first game since I think February, I think early February, where Villa, uh, early February 2022, where Villa had gone two goals up um, and not actually gone on to win the game. So even though there have been some signs creeping in that, you know, a little bit of vulnerability there, you look at the, the Burnley game, which, you know, Villa eventually went on and won the Man United games um, and, uh, and then Luton. Uh, Nottingham Forest again, which Villa, you know, went and got the results eventually. But there were some worrying signs there. Um, I think it's just, you know, just just a good reaction that they didn't lose the game because that point really keeps them ticking over. And you know, it, that they haven't lost any ground in terms of the Champions League race because you know Man United could only draw as well. And I just think with six games left, I still only I still believe Villa only need probably two or three wins, and and that'll be enough for them. Yeah, I still just don't. I want fourth. I, I know fifth, in all probability, will get Champions League football. But there's something about finishing fourth that I, I want to do it. And we've been fourth now for a, a long, long time. It feels we've been in the top four all season. I'd feel like an element, a tinge of disappointment. Look, obviously, if we get Champions League and finish fifth, great. But I still, in my head, I don't feel like that's certain for for whatever reason. But. <laughs> I just feel we have lost momentum in the second half of the season. There's no getting away, away with that. The, the first half of the season was brilliant, but that was never realistically going to continue because I think what Villa were doing at that time was, was unprecedented, especially at home. But almost felt by finishing fifth, you get people turn around and kind of saying like, mm-hmm. oh, well, you know, in seasons gone by, you wouldn't have got Champions League. There's something about it that oh, I still really want to finish fourth. Villa still can finish fourth, but there's no getting away from it now that Tottenham are the favourites for that position. Yeah, the Tottenham are coming on a bit stronger than than I thought they would be now. I thought they were impressive yesterday, got the job done again. Obviously beat Villa, you know, that was the key one, wasn't it? When when the two teams came head to head and it was just such a co- convincing win for Tottenham in the end. Um, but I, I, I'm looking at the bigger picture. I think if Villa get get Champions League, if they finish in fifth, you know, fourth or fifth place, it's improvement on last season. It continues that run of... Uh, you know, that momentum building that Nassif Sawiris and, and Wes Edens have wanted since they took over at the club. Um, and look, you know, how how great would it be to to qualify for the Champions League and then potentially still have that Europa Conference League final to look forward to after the Premier League season has finished? Um, uh, you know, which would really put the the icing on the cake almost and, and, and just give this Villa team the... The justification, I think, that it deserves that it is a really strong team. But yeah, look, you're right. They have lost a little bit of momentum. I think injuries have obviously played their part in that. Um, and also, I take your point, I do think Villa were going to slow down at some point because, you know, if they didn't, they would be still in the title race, wouldn't they? Yeah, right. Let's go back through the game and then let's go go, go to, the, to, to the first half. I think team selection was interesting, I felt, but I agreed with, with, with the team selection. You could see in the warm-up that McGinn was very much up, up alongside Watkins when they were doing their passing and, and finishing drills, which meant Tillerman stayed in midfield. But I think we saw in the game before for Brentford against Brighton when they drew nil nil. they obviously kind of adapted a little bit. They've wanted to make themselves a bit, a bit tougher to beat. So you always kind of got the feeling that Brentford would be a little more defensive in, in this game. So I kind of like that you know, instead of playing Tillemans as the as, as the 10, he went for McGinn, who's going to get up alongside Watkins in the box and roam around a bit more. And actually, when a team's harder to break down, I think having Tillemans as the, as the deeper midfielder is actually better for Villa in home games. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can't knock the first half performance, can you? No. It, it was great. It was everything that you wanted from Villa. They were in control of the game. Um, they were quite tight and narrow, which is typically what, you know, Emery likes. They had a very good shape throughout the first half, worked the ball well. Um, were quite patient in their in their build up play, um, and then you know got the got the goal from from Watkins that put them ahead, and then from there you kind of just thought this is pretty much going to be business as as usual for for Villa at Villa Park. You know Brentford hadn't won for eight games; they didn't have Tony in the team. Um, I just I, I didn't envisage what would happen next, really. Yeah, it was great to have McGinn back as well because they've they've missed him across the three games. I mean, we know what went on to happen. With Douglas Louise, obviously Villa rested a lot of players in the in the game before against Manchester City. Were you, were you surprised to see Douglas Louise start? Did it feel a, a bit of a risk to you? Uh, no, no, I think well, you know. But the, we, obviously now we know he ain't going to be able to play for the next two games, which is a huge blow. <laughs> and I, I just think it's yeah, but you know you've got to play your best players when they're available, and yeah, 
the, the conversation, they would have had the conversation before the game, don't do anything stupid. And for 96 minutes, he didn't. <laughs> I mean, just you know, it's just, pounded the game, it's just, it was just silly, really, you know, but um, it's frustrating for Villa as well, isn't it? Because every week it seems like they have some sort of setback and you just they just can't yeah. seem to get their full team out. Um, you know, you, you think of where they might have been had Torres not got injured, um, you know, leading up to that <clears throat> New Year period, <clears throat> when at the time they were still in the title race, albeit with a very long way to go. Um, you know, you think what it might have been like if Mings had been available for, for the season, because I still do believe that he, you know, he's Villa's strongest defender. Right. Um, uh, you know, Ramsey being available for the season, Kamara missing out, McGinn picking up that suspension at a, a really important time. It's just been setback after setback after setback, but Villa have put together a very, very strong and expensively assembled squad now. And it shows that, yes, Unai Emery is a brilliant manager and he's managed to get the best out of them. But typically when Villa have missed players, they have always had a, repl- a replacement to come in. There's been a couple of times where, you know, against Man City, for example, bringing in Eric Boonham, not necessarily what you want, you know, a youngster with not that much experience. Um, but I think when Villa have had injuries, they've been able to sort of replace them quite well. What's upsetting me at the moment is, and this has been a pattern for a long time now, is every time we get one back, so the one get, goes, comes yeah. back from suspension this game, then he's back and then Louise is out now. For, yeah. So that's been, I don't think Villa's injuries generally have gone under the radar, but I accept that everyone gets injuries and suspensions and other teams other than Villa have had it bad at various points in the season, which is the Villa's just seems consistent through the season. And when someone does pick up an injury, it's just tended to be to be a season ender. And I think that's what, what's costed, cost Villa the, the, the most. I mean, yeah, you're right. You know, it's been from the very, very first game, hasn't it? You, you have set the when, you have when did just before the season. Then Ming's on the opening day of the season. I think Villa had a pretty good run after that because they didn't have too many key injuries. You know, didn't didn't have too many. But then they started to build up. You know, inevitably because of the amount of games that they played. Um, you know, they're always going to pick up injuries when you when you're playing. You're asking players to play sort of forty five to fifty games a season with with the cups and um, in Europe. So <clears throat> across the board, it's been it's been a, a mad season for injuries, hasn't it? I think Arsenal are probably the only team who have um, got away with it, but haven't suffered. You know, too much. You still look yeah. at Liverpool, who are, who are joint top of the sea, uh, joint top of the the Premier League, and there without Allison, without Trent Alexander Arnold, without the J- Jota, three of their main important players that would be playing every week um, aren't playing, and they're you know still joint top of the Premier League. You look at Newcastle; season's been completely decimated by injuries, um, and Manchester United have had problems as well. So Villa aren't, and, and Tottenham obviously had that really bad spell, didn't they, at the start of the season? So Villa aren't alone in this, but it just feels like it's been staggered throughout the season yeah, and, it just, and it's just, it, just, it just never stops. And the more I'm watching Villa play now, the more I feel like they're really missing Kamara. That feels like the big one for them. Yeah, and I felt it was a control performance in in the first half, a bit more like the the home games of of, of the last twelve months or so. And Villa weren't ever really threatened by Brentford. Lot, lots of possession. One thing I've noticed, and look, Brentford were basically defending in in the north stand in 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 the first half. They couldn't have been any deeper. They couldn't have got any more men behind the ball. But Villa pressed and probed and tried to do the right things. But one thing that it's not, not annoyed me. That's not not the right word. One thing I found a bit worrying. Probably, probably from January onwards is when now Villa were passing the ball in the first half of the season, especially at Villa Park. It all felt like it ran like clockwork. Everyone would get the way the pass right. Everyone knew where the, each other was was going to be. And maybe there is something in the injuries now where it is a different eleven every week, a different mm. back four, and, and whatnot. But we've almost gone a, a, a little bit sloppy, and that that rhythm seems to have gone from from Villa's Villa's play. Now you think I always think of that goal they scored against Arsenal in the. In the, in the in the one nil game at Villa Park, the way they came forward, every pass was perfect. Every player knew where each other w- w- was going to be, and it, that move ended with McGinn swiveling them and, and putting the ball in the in, in the back of the net. We don't feel as free flowing. I, I get as well, you know, when you're playing against a team that is so deep, it's not as easy to do that. But it, this isn't just been a problem in, in in this game against Brentford. It just hasn't been as fluid in the second half of the season at Villa Park, and a lot of passes were misplaced. In that first half, Louise and Concer, people who've been very, very consistent all season. I actually mm. thought this was Concer's 
worst game of yeah. the season generally, yeah. defensively <clears throat> and and in terms of uh, of on the ball, he had a, had a difficult day. But do you, do you are you saying the same thing as me that yeah. just as rhythmic as it was? Yeah, I agree, and I think down to three things really. One, the injuries. Um, you know, Villa have not got the same team every week that that was that was almost. We almost knew what Villa's best team was, didn't we, at yeah. the start of the season? And um, you know, give or take one or, or sometimes two players, it was it was typically the same outfield outfield um, lineup. So everybody knew their positions. They were in a bit of rhythm. They were in that flow, and it was working really well. And and the patterns of play that they worked on in training, they didn't need to adjust too much because the team wasn't training uh, changing too much. Now what you've got is players like Conzas having to slightly switch out of position a little bit. So he's position in the you know actual position in the field is different so it's a slight change of passing and the way he's moving around a little bit we did beat Manchester City and Arsenal yeah we've there. gone yeah I know I know it's, it's, it, but I do feel that he's a better centre half and he knows yeah, that he's, he's going to be he knows where he, he's certainly more comfortable at centre half um the second thing I think is that there's a, there is a little bit of tiredness there now you know a long season lots of Villas players are international players and have been away on international duty have played international minutes it's um so you know that that tiredness now is building up there's a, there's going to be inevitably a bit of fatigue there because they've gone through a very long premier league season already a european campaign international fixtures as i've already mentioned and and the third thing mainly i think is that teams have just started to figure villa out a bit more now they realize that that yes at the start of the season villa were this free flowing forward thinking team um in great form but now opponents are pretty scared, you know, facing Villa and have yeah, to, a lot of respect, have don't to we? yeah, yeah, they have to really, really work hard to to find a way to get either a point against them or or to go and beat them. So, you know, the the analysis will be a lot more detailed, and they'll be looking at opponents. Typically, now will be trying to stop Villa rather than going there and 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 trying to beat them. So, more of the onus is to stop Villa, and that will that will probably um, play a part in that. I think. If it did get the goal, McGinn cross, Watkins header, a bit of confusion as to whether it was Watkins or, or, or Bailey's goal. At the time, I wanted it to be Bailey's goal because he was in my fantasy team and Watkins isn't in there at the moment. After, Watkins isn't in there. I mean, he got injured, I don't play he got, he got but, injured but, didn't he? He's been in mine. Watkins, isn't he? No, he's been in mine all season. Then he got injured and I took him out and I haven't found a way to, to, to get him back, back in yet. So ideally, I would have liked that to have been Bailey's goal. But, you know, Watkins does it. Does it again? Not the greatest piece of goalkeeping I've, I've ever seen. Every now and again, I'll watch a team, whether it be on the telly or whether I'm at Villa Park or wherever, what, watching the game. And I always think, oh, we're so lucky. We're so lucky to have to have Emmy Martinez. Mm-hmm. Albeit he didn't make a single save at the weekend because every shot on target in that game went in. But you know, I think Brent, one of the reasons Brentford have suffered this season is the change of goalkeeper because Roy was mm-hmm. so so consistent and and so good so good for them. So, but you know, great to see him back back on the score sheet because. Again, I feel like I might be making this up, but I know he has had an injury, but he Watkins hasn't felt the same. Even in the Spurs game, he didn't feel the same as he had done in in, in previous weeks. But great to see him uh, get on the end of something and get on the score sheet in the first half. He's just a consistent goal scorer, isn't he? You know, His numbers are a joke it, now. Yeah, I mean, what is he second in the... Second in the Premier League now, so he's second for goals, but he's top for com- top for uh, goals, goals and assists. And assists yeah, so I mean, you know what 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 an amazing um, scenario he's now faced with. You know, potentially helping his team qualify for the Champions League, but also maybe going on and winning the you know becoming the top goal scorer in the Premier League. That no matter what we think of Watkins, we we just didn't expect that at the start of the no, season. Did we? we didn't expect him to be there, so his numbers are frightening. Um, always comes up. With the goods, you know, and I think Emery noticed right from the very start, if he just played a little bit more centrally and all the others, uh, all of his teammates did the jobs that they needed to do um, the right way, then he would get the chances and eventually get the goals. And, you know, that's proven. That's proven the case. He's just he's just invaluable now, isn't he? He's become a bit of a, <clears throat> a bit of a sniffer, kind of scoring those typical num- number nine goals. Head, head has kind of been added to his game mm. as well. Rezo, I don't mm. know whether whether you know this. I'm not, I'm not putting you on the spot. Here. Has head has been something that he's been working on. We know he had that that strikers coach, but he's he feel, I feel like he's scoring more headers this season than he ever has done before. Yeah, no, I don't necessarily think so. I mean, I know they do a lot on set pieces, and um, you know. One of Villa's stronger stronger headers of the ball is always Ollie Watkins. You know, at the three that it was last year, it was always um, Watkins, Buendia and Mings. Those were the three that were so desperately needed uh, in defensive areas because, you know, they won a lot of first contacts. Um, 
but yeah, look, he's he's brought that to his game. I don't know if he didn't if he did that specifically with his striker coach, but I know that he was working on more um, uh, finishes with his feet certainly. And what we see now is that he can finish with both feet, can't we? Yeah, perfectly, brilliant. and also with the head. So um, yeah, he's got everything. Yeah, so Villa going to half time. Life's <clears> good. One one nil up. I'm ta- I'm taking selfies with the people that I sit with <laughs> at, at half time with a big smile on my face, thinking hopefully I'll get to post this at, at the end of the game. Generally, I've just started. I've, I've, just a little story here. Yeah, I've, I've started to take more photos of like me and my dad at Villa games and stuff because I realised that we've been going for like 31 years now together and I realised that like it's not going to be forever. forever. This mm. is no, It's not going to happen. He's mobility is get, he's getting worse. He struggles. He still comes every... Like I've tweeted the other day, he fouls his fitness test every single game <laughs> to come to Villa Park but I still st- still take him in a- anyway and uh, just started taking more photos and he said to me the other day that he, he started taking the photo of the scoreboard at the end of every game, just a lot oh, really? so yeah. he's got like a memory that that, that he was there. So yeah, look, just a little, little, little tale. I've just started to do that and post it to my social media so that there's a record because we've done it for 31 years, but there's very little record of us of us having <laughs> yeah. done that. And if we, again, we get to the end of the season and Villa do something special, like win the Conference League or qualify for the Champions League, I'm going to have some stuff to, to, to look back on. Villa start, Villa really, you know, did... The perfect thing that you can do. You've scored right before half time and completely changed the face of the game there. And then the one thing Brentford wouldn't have wanted is don't concede in the first few minutes of the of the second half. It's something Villa have done themselves quite a lot mm. recently. They get themselves 2 0 up as well. And you really do start to think then, brilliant. Perfect. Isn't right, it? here we go. Perfect they've scenario. Done, yeah. They've done really well there. Rogers is off the mark. That's going to give him some confidence. It was a it was a very well taken goal. What what have you made of Rogers? In, in recent weeks, you can say there's something there, can't you? It's probably yeah. the off the ball stuff that's not quite there at the moment. But he took his goal with real aplomb. Yeah, brilliant goal. Um, let's let's focus on that first because you know he deserves deserves the credit for that. Lovely, lovely control, lovely touching, um, and the the way he moved past the defender and then just kind of gave the goalkeeper the eyes, didn't he? And then put it in the other the other corner, and you could see how happy he was. Actually, you know, a, a young lad moving Relief. to the Premier League. You know he's, he's had his big move to Man City that didn't that didn't obviously work out. He's now back in a Champions League chasing team, um, playing regular, and yeah, getting that getting that goal in front of the whole end, fantastic, Love, lovely goal. Um, I think he struggled a little bit. I think you know he, he hasn't. He's looked a little bit for me. He looks a little bit out of place. He looks like a new player. Looks like somebody who he's um, still finding his way. But he's had moments, you know, I think back to the um, Man City game, you know, he set up the goal there, didn't he? Yeah. Um, and, and, and and looks like he's starting to find his feet. But I always said when he came in in January, I thought he's going to need this period running up to the summer to get used to um, playing in this Villa team. And I think if Ramsey wasn't injured, he wouldn't be starting games. So he's been sort of fast-tracked a little bit. Um, and he's learning on the job, but the signs are good, and he's a very young player with potential. So, um, yeah, you know, Villa could have a real star on their hands if he if he develops the way they think he will. I noticed in the first half actually there was a spell when we were we were attacking, and he kind of came short for the ball, but McGinn was trying to rush him to to get wide. Emery was screaming at him mm-hmm. to, to get wide, and he, he he didn't he didn't do it. He stayed where where where, where he was, and the, the attack kind of slowed down but because of that. I guess they're the things that are going to take time for him to. To, to pick yeah. up on, and you know, it took other players time to to get to get used to Emery, even even like Emmy Martinez. It, it took him a while to get used to to, to what Emery wants. But you know, he must have he must be doing something and have something because Emery wouldn't be picking him at the moment. You know, there's some good players sat on that bench at the, at the moment. Emery doesn't have to pick him, but he's choosing to, to start him over the likes of Diaby. I know Diaby wouldn't play in that that position. They shuffle yeah. things around. But, you know, he's choosing him to play at the moment instead yeah. of him, isn't he? So he's you know he's got something. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, he would. Wouldn't have signed him, would they? If they didn't, if they didn't rate him, um, and you know that's the position that's now become available. Yes, Villa could have tweaked things around, and you know potentially put Zaniolo there, or even Diaby, even though that you know that's not necessarily their position. But Rogers was signed to play in this position, so you know why mess it? Why mess around too much when he's doing okay? Um, and look, you know this goal, this goal will certainly help him. Yeah, I mean, I think he's probably. I think we can all agree that he's probably started more games than perhaps was planned. Yeah, and that's because of Ramsey's injury, isn't it? You know, if, yeah. if Ramsey if Ramsey was fit, then he'd be playing. 
McGinn, for example, McGinn could have played left and Diaby mm-hmm. could have started that game, but Emery is choosing to to start Rogers, which is a which is a good sign because he's obviously seen something in there that he really really likes. Right, I want to delay getting into the capitulation, so the only why I can really do that is by inserting the NordVPN advert, Greg. So let's hear more about NordVPN, our sponsors. 1874 is proudly sponsored by NordVPN. So when and you can't watch it, we want to help you. NordVPN is a secure and private service which works on pretty much any device, including your laptop, mobile, and television. So if you want to watch some live content, it allows you to appear like you're in another country. And whilst you're connected, no one else can find out what you're doing, including your internet service provider. Beyond this, the service also has threat protection baked in to protect you from intrusive website ads and malware, which is pretty handy for you. As part of NordVPN support performance for free, this also includes Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. All you've got to do is go to 1874.io slash NordVPN and sign up. All the details are also in the description. As always, we're very grateful to anyone that signs up. We know that money is tight, but if you think NordVPN will help you out, it will also help keep the channel running and help us too. Right then, Greg, so let's do it. Let's let's relive it. Villa are 2-0 up. As I say, life is very, very good at this point. The sun is shining. Everyone's having a lovely, lovely time. And then a mad nine nine minutes, all down the same side, as you as, as you said earlier. Conser's side, I do think he had an uncomfortable day, but... All three were crosses as well of, of some description. That's a, that's a bit concerning, you know, that they didn't learn their lessons. And Emery kind of alluded to that with what he said after the game as well. Yeah, it was a really sort of disjointed period, wasn't it? You know, you look at the you look at Torres and um, and Carlos, and, and obviously you know Conzo, it was down his side. But the the three of them really they just they just they seemed very loose. They weren't well Absolutely. connected. Um, and uh, and and look, I, I did mention this earlier, but it was I felt it was more about Brentford being brave and really pushing players forward. Because if you look at I think the second goal, there's an overload of of attackers against defenders, and why Villa are so um, so open at that point when they're when they're t- well, they would have been two one up, but. Um, you know, it's a bit of a surprise, and, and obviously Ollie Watkins said after the game, didn't he? We we need to learn to to to, get, to we need to get this big team mentality really, where we're two 0 up and we just go and secure the game. And I think over the course of the season, Villa have done that quite well. But clearly, you know, there are there were signs, you know, Forest, Luton, the Man United games, Burnley, um, where where Villa have just looked a little bit loose. And this was a game where the same sort of patterns emerged. Um, and I was looking at Torres and Carlos and I was just thinking, just get a bit tighter together. And, you know, they, they just felt like they were just falling apart a bit. Yeah, look, we've considered a lot of goals from cor- from crosses, from corners, mm. from, set, from set players. That, that there doesn't seem to be a pattern in the in the type of goal that Villa are conceding uh, at the moment. Look, they've conceded goals all season. And we haven't, we're nowhere near as clean sheets, as many clean sheets as... Uh, we were we were last season under Emery where it just felt like we were churning them out week week after week. I think we've already conceded more goals. I guess Villa are a bit unfortunate with that first goal as well because although they didn't defend it well, you can never finish a ball like that again if, if you try. <laughs> you even mean to do it? You just hit him on his standing foot and just finds the the bottom corner. J- Jorgensen, he just almost looked embarrassed as well. Oh when, yeah, when he, when he put it his in face, it. so yeah. annoying, so lucky. <laughs> His face, it was just like, he didn't know what to do initially. He kind of just went like that, didn't he? Shrugged his shoulders, but then then almost tried to shake it off as if he meant it. He doesn't <laughs> score quite, many, I don't think. You no, are, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. He was quite quite a funny, uh, quite a funny celebration. Yeah, and Martinez looked pretty stunned, didn't he? Because he obviously wrong-footed him and he couldn't do anything about it. Um, yeah, an element of, of, mis, of misfortune there, but... It's Villa's. It's the way Villa reacted after that. They should have. Mm. They should have. They needed to be better after that, didn't they? You felt keep like, your composure, and they just yeah. didn't do that. They got worse, if anything. <clears throat> yeah, um, and I mean, you know, the way they turned it around, it was just such a crazy ten minute period, wasn't it? You did, I, I, I really, I just didn't envisage that happening. I didn't see it after the the way the first half went, and um, you know, the way they they'd obviously gone two and up so, so quickly after after half time. Um, but yeah, I just I put it back to a little bit of yes, it was disjointed defensively, but I just felt like there just needed to be a bit more security from those in front. You know, Bailey was just not giving Carlos enough, uh, not giving Conzo enough protection um, down the right side, uh, and it felt like that they just lacked a, re- a real solid defensive midfielder at that point as well. 
Yeah, it's, diff- it's difficult, isn't it? Even when it got to two two, I was gutted, but I still think I still was like, oh well, I, th- I still think we can score again. So you just got to try and try, try and win the game. But when it go when it goes to three two, I mean, Torres for the second didn't even though he looked at him nonstop, didn't seem to know where mm-hmm. Embu- Embumo was. Then the third one just felt it's easy for for Visser to get to get that tap in. Just 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 way too easy. Yeah, they they were running on adrenaline then, weren't they, at Brentford at that point, and it felt like they had the momentum with them and um Obviously, I was only watching, you know, the game. I wasn't inside Villa Park. But what was the reaction like? Because I'd heard from a few friends that were there that, that that they were quite surprised with actually the way the fans had turned on on some of the players at that point. What did, did you feel that at all? No, I've got to say, I did. I didn't <clears> feel that in, in, in the whole thing. I'm the first person to sit here and say when those kind of things do happen. But I didn't. I think everyone was just in shock, mm, to, mm. to be honest. And I felt like they, you know, when the team started to attack again, they they did get behind. I didn't really notice any players. Get, getting singled out or, or anything like that, it was a, it was a collective thing, as, as Watkins said at the, at the at the end of the game. I just felt we were struggling, and the crowd was just shocked because you've got the elation yeah. of being two 0 up, and suddenly you, you're losing, and you can't understand how how it's happened. I think the crowd was just just in shock a bit, to, to be honest. And then I have a slight gripe with it, with with them. You know, I think the players, you know, have to take responsibility for what's unfolded on on the pitch. There, you know, only the second time I think I've ever questioned. <laughs> And I am right, and it's going to come in the space of probably just three or four weeks. And look, I, again, I say this knowing that Unai Emery knows a lot more about football that, that, than I do, and I'm you know not being negative about Emery, but it's just something that you know I I found bizarre is that it was three two, we weren't playing well. I didn't feel we were going to break them down, albeit you know Watkins scores a header and we do break them down. But he was planning a load of subs. So he had yeah. three. He had three subs <clears> think, ready to ready to come on at the point while it was still three two to Brentford. We then score, and he tells them to sit down. So Dr. It was Dr. B. Kane, Kessler, Hayden, and who was the third? And I think it might not, might not have been Duran actually. Zaniola was already on at that. Zaniola was already on. He yeah. had. He had three. Oh, it was the mm. Moreno. So he was going to mm. change both fullbacks. I think was was what he's going to. So we had those three subs lined up: Kessler, Hayden, Dr. B. and Moreno. We score, he tells, tells them all to sit down. Oh, I think he still should have made those subs because I get that it's those players yeah. that have got you back in the game, but you were obviously thinking at the time, this isn't going well, we need to inject something. You know, I, As I've said, I think Conte was having an, an awful game, very rare for him. He obviously wanted to get a, a, a different role back on. And then he just aborted those subs completely. Yeah, 3-3, three, three, we had probably had a couple of, of attacks of, of, of any real substance. But again, we would Brentford went back, reverted to type and tried to defend deep and hit yeah. us on a break. They got Tony on by this point. Then when he did make the subs, you know, he didn't bring Kessler Hayden on, he brought Duran on instead. It was in stoppage time. so Yeah, it felt like a bit too late, late at that point, didn't it? But, I mean, there were a couple of good chances, weren't they? You know, Luca the, Dean. D- Dean, you had that one, yeah. And there, were, there was a bit of... It felt like Villa were pushing and Villa were going to be yeah. the team that got oh, that, yeah, got that goal if there was if there was going to be a winner. Um, so I don't, I've I've not I've not I don't think they did anything wrong in their approach. I think they went about it the right way. They were quite patient. They didn't force it um, without you know without forcing it too much. They they tried to have a real go at it, but in a patient and controlled way. But I think at that point when Villa equalised, Emery. Emery just stopped and thought, right, I just need a, I need a, re, I need a, a rethink for a minute or two. Um, and then the longer he thought about it, a point actually is not a bad result in, in where they are at and, and where the game had unfolded. Yes, Villa would, would have been expected to go and win that game um, because it's Brentford. Yes, there would have been frustration that they didn't. But in the grand scheme of things, a point isn't actually that bad, knowing that Man United um, were then playing Liverpool the next day and that that you know, they might not have gained any ground anyway. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, look, yeah, I haven't spoke to him or asked him about that. But, but yeah, I just think he had, I think he wanted a, a rethink um, for a couple of minutes and then and then moved from there. I guess my main query with that would be, I feel a bit sorry for Diaba. Well, 3-3 three, 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 three is a complete, it's a different ball game to 3-2, isn't it? You know, you, you, you're yeah, back in the game yeah. and it's more about, you've actually got something to hold on yeah, to. Yeah. And you're not chasing everything. You're not, you're not necessarily chasing something because, um, yes, you still want to go and win the game, but you've actually got something to lose at that point. So, you know, do, do you need those three changes at that point? Because that's literally gung-ho, isn't it? You're 3-2 down. This is the last roll of the dice almost. We've got to go and change it. But, but then he did make those changes in, the, in injury time. But it was later, know. it was yeah. later, wasn't it? You know, when he'd had time to think and assess and where the game was at, how Brentford were going to react to the equaliser, etc. I think Diaby will be <clears> frustrated. 
He's not done a lot wrong recently. To be mm. coming on in stoppage time in a game where you know we're we're behind. I think he, uh, I mean, as I say, I trust Emery completely. I think it's a bit harsh the RB didn't start, and then to not be coming until stoppage time. I know, he, I know from behind the scenes that he's when he initially got dropped against Manchester City, he was really, really, really yeah. un- unhappy about that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think he's kind of not alienating him. That's that's not the right not the right word. But you know, he's done well recently. You kind of you feel like he was just getting back to some of the form that he was showing in the first half of the season. Scored a goal last weekend against Wolves. And then you kind of feel like taking him back to square one by bringing him on in stoppage time. Yeah, look, I, I agree with you. I think he should have come on a little bit. He should have come on earlier. But, um, you know, there were times where we were talking about Bailey earlier in the season, weren't we, saying that he would have felt this frustrated. Yeah. There's, there's one position, really. The two of them very, very rarely play, do they? It's, mm. it's, it's so... And then, you know, you've obviously got to think of the Lille double header coming up on Thursday and then, um, and then into next week. You know, is he looking at that thinking... Um, thinking Diaby's going to be my starting guy there. Yeah, still, still get your point. You know, Villa, Villa haven't got the game wrapped up, and you would have expected him to come on a bit earlier. But yeah, I just think I think there are a lot of games left. Really, still, you know, Villa have got six six Premier League games left. Um, they hope they've still got five games in Europe, so eleven games still to go. They they still want some players fresh. Even, Might have been a little bit of thinking in that. Maybe, but even Durant to an extent, you know, he scored against Manchester City. He made an impact when he came on again against Wolves. But again, alienation is not the right word. I just can't think of a think think of an, another word. But he kind of be, he he must think, and he, we know he's difficult behind the scenes mm-hmm. as well. Durant must think I'm not coming on when we're three two down against against Brentford in the 69th minute or, or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. When am when am I when am I ever coming on? No, and I, you know, I don't like uh, some of the stuff I've heard about Durant behind the scenes. But you got to say there. Probably that would be fair. Yeah, 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 I think so. It's just who two you take off, don't you? Is he not going to take Watkins off? And then, no, no, yeah, definitely not. And then, He's and then, him on alongside him before in games. Yeah, I know, but then it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because you, yeah. you take a midfielder off and it completely opens up the game then for Brentford and then they might go and get another goal and it's game over. So I can understand that, but I can also understand the players' frustrations because, look, players want to play mm. and, um, you know, if Duran's obviously got his goal in the previous game and will think he deserves more of a chance. Yeah, right. I think that probably does us. I'll try and do a show looking ahead to the to the European game on Thursday. I, I've completely messed up Thursday. I can't go now. I've made oh, really? Big, I've made a big error. Yeah, I've made a, a working error. So I usually do talk sport too on a Tuesday. Got asked to switch to, if I could switch days to help someone else out. And I was like, I was thinking, I was like ringing a bell for something, but I'm not, I'm not sure what. But I, you know, I asked my asked my girlfriend, you know, is there anything because we just moved house? I was like, anything to do with that? And she was like, no, 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 no. Didn't even think to look at Villa. Villa might be playing, and then I had in my head that we were away first anyway for yeah for for, for some reason because we have we have been previously, and yeah, I've messed up. So now I'm working instead of uh, I wouldn't get back in time. So my friend's going to take my dad to the game in, in, instead. Thank you, Mark, Martin. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's, that's a I'm shame that you're going to miss that because it'll be, I think it'll be a good atmosphere I might there. get back just in time for kick-off to watch it on TV. Mm, I think it'll be a good atmosphere at Villa Park on, on Thursday. I think the fans will be proper up for it. Um, it's not going to be easy. I think it's going to be tougher than Ajax. No, I, mean, I think you know, it's going to be a lot tougher. Leo in good form, you know, managed by a... Managed by a you know a very successful manager in Fonseca, who um, interesting manager as well. Who, who you know Villa were, Villa were keen on at one point, but he didn't fancy coming to Villa because they were in the Championship at that time when when Villa were interested. Um, you know, a couple of good players in that team. Jonathan David, obviously one of the one of the hottest strikers in Europe. He's really found his form in the second half of this season. Um, presume we'll see him in the Premier League at some point in his career. Lot, lots of teams interested in him. Um, yeah, and good good mix of experience and, and some young players in that little team. And, um, in good form, fourth in league one. So, yeah, it's going to be a tough game. Much harder I think, than Ajax, I think. Yeah, I think it's a really tough draw. I think being at home first makes it tougher as well. We haven't really had to navigate that. And I always think with a, you know, a team like Lille, you'll look at them and think Villa are, Villa are a better team than them. Yeah. But actually, you know, in terms of European experience, Lille have probably been in Europe you know, more than Villa tenfold over, over the last 10 to 15 years, haven't they? So, you know, yeah, they, yeah. They've got, I feel like they've just got them more used to it than we are. Yeah, I don't think there's too many players left from from the title winning team of three years ago. Is it three or four years ago? Um, but you know, yeah, you know they've they've played Champions League football. They're they're exactly. in Europe most most years, aren't they? Um, 
And look, you know, the, the away leg's going to be difficult. The, the fans are, you know, right on top of you. They're, they're really up for it. Um, and, and look, you know, they're a very good, successful team at home. So, yeah, tough tough draw. But but look, it's Villa have, yeah, Villa are into the quarterfinals now. This is the business end of the season. They they know that get through this week, you know, it's a tough week, two, two games against Lille with Arsenal in the middle. Um, if they get through that, they've obviously got another two games in between the Brighton and Liverpool game. Uh, Liverpool game so yeah it's going to be a really hectic end to the season if all goes well for Villa yeah I'm a bit worried for um, in some ways actually being at home first probably helps in terms of the Premier League not having the not having the travel before you go and play against um, against Arsenal the Premier League's form too at the moment that's a yeah, tough, tough game isn't it? Yeah, yeah we'll see we'll see what happens you know we'd rather be having these 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 conversations about these exciting games Villa towards the yeah, top end of the, and, the and, Premier and look, League and look you know Arsenal have got Bayern Munich themselves, haven't they? So it's not True. it's not it's not an easy week for them either. I don't just feel like they're just at the the peak of their powers at the moment, don't don't you? Like when we beat them at Christmas, you feel like they were a little bit of a sticky patch at the time. Yeah. If my memory yeah. serves me correctly, this now they played well. Like... They didn't they? They did play well. Oh, yeah, they, 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 they probably deserve to get something. From, well, they did deserve to get something from the game. I thought um, they're just churning results out at the moment, aren't they? With the ease it feels as well. Yeah, but you know, football football can change very quickly, and this is this is a this is a season defining week for Arsenal as well as it is for Villa yeah. because they get for the Bayern Munich games, um, and they get past Villa at the weekend. Then, wow, you know what a what a finale it could be for them. Yeah, yeah, they're doing really really well. Arteta's done a, done a magnificent job there. Right then, Greg, thank you very much. Thank you to you. Thank you to NordVPN. Thank you to Adam. Thank you to everyone who's watching and listening as well. If you could do all the things that help the channel, like liking, subscribing, wherever you're taking in the podcast, commenting with your thoughts as well. Do you agree with the points that Greg and I have made throughout the show? Do let us know in the comments. And yeah, just liking as well. Liking even helps us appear in places we may not normally appear. So yeah, if you can do all those things, it would be very much appreciated. Hopefully you're glad that the content is back after the little break due to internationals, me moving and life just being all over the place. So yeah, we're back now putting out the content again as consistently as we were before all the things I've just mentioned. If you are going to Villa Park on Thursday, no, actually, forget all that because I will do a show before the Lille game, previewing it in one way or another. So, so watch out for that. And yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed the show. And yeah, have a great week. And as ever, only one thing left to say. <laughs>